Welcome back. So last time I left off, uh, Jeff and Devin were laying up these closeouts for the wing spars, and here you can see Jeff's got one of the ones there for the radius, and he's just uh, doing a rough trim on it there. So that's going to end up boxing out uh, that radius in the wing spar on one of them. And there's one of the larger sections there that um, boxes out the wing spar where it mates up to the main spar. And that way uh, the two can sort of fit face to face together without being sort of two C channels facing each other. And here's Jeff and Devin, they're in the process of trimming those off outside um, and then uh, you know getting ready to test fit them. And here you can see there's one of them sort of sitting in the other one, it still needs to be trimmed on the end, it was oversized for the mold. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how it sits in there, so it boxes it out. And meanwhile, Dan's working on uh, putting together, putting the engine back together. Um, Britt finished off uh, welding up these different intake pipes, the new pipes that uh, allow us to plumb in the water to air intercooler that you can see there. So we're hoping this is going to, uh, you know, cool down the engine, the intake air a lot more and give us a lot better performance. And ultimately, we're um, going to be running fuel through there, but um, just for testing, we're just going to be running mains water through there. And honestly, I thought we had laid up all the parts, but it turns out I forgot um, that we hadn't laid up the skins yet, upper lower skins for the elevators. So these are the molds there that have been sort of sitting tucked under some of the tables there. So there's three molds for making four parts, and they've already been primed a while ago. And uh, so Jeff's getting organized um, with the layup schedules and stuff to get those underway. And here he is uh, on the table there just cutting out the core pieces for a couple of those skins uh, to get them started. So the job was to actually just do two of them there on Friday. And there's one of those closeouts here now pretty much trimmed and uh, sanded down ready to sort of be bonded into place. And I think you'll see that happening next week. And I pretty much spent all of Thursday fighting with this door. So it turns out that even though that bracket is doing the job it's designed to do and allowing the door to close um, with that 400 pound gas strut, it was still pushing a little bit on the door and forcing it to sort of bulge out there right at the bottom where the window is. And so I just wasn't happy with the way the door was shutting down. And, uh, you know, until I get that sorted out, I can't finish off um, checking the alignment on the pin locks. So that was sticking out right there and so the solution is basically just to get rid of this 400 pound gas strut and go to something smaller. So I'm basically going to switch out to what it's going to be probably 130 pound strut and this is sort of an example here. And the geometry is going to be there where we basically install it um, sort of vertical like that and then it won't take as much load and it's going to be just as neat and it'll work just the way we need it to work. Um, but anyway, it'll mean that I've still got to create hard points there on the door and on the frame and create a new bracket and, you know, get it all sorted out and I'll be working on the weekend just to get the geometry all sorted out. But uh, that should give us what we need and I uh, won't have to fight it and, and then the locks will all align nicely. And it's kind of pointless pushing a bad position, but anyway, so um, stepping back from that, I didn't want it to slow down uh, getting the pressurization done, so I've just moved on now. And uh, knowing that the door is going to sit nicely shut there with that lower weight of the gas strut. So I'm in the process now of working out the pins. And you see that thing, that bracket's going to go away now. It's not even bolted up right now. And meanwhile, uh, Jeff and Devin uh, got underway here with laying up uh, the first of the skins there for uh, the elevators. And I believe this is, uh, that's one of the lower skins. So they got those uh, moving along. And here's uh, Devin just wetting down some of the core pieces there for those ones. And by early afternoon on Friday, Dan had pretty much got everything sort of uh, tied up with the um, getting the new intercooler installed. And as you can see, we got the mains uh, water hooked up to it there. And we did a pressure test on that intercooler to make sure it wasn't leaking anywhere. I uh, didn't want any water going into the engine. So it passed that without any problems. We got all the different uh, sensors and everything hooked up so now you know we can measure the temperature on both sides of that new intercooler as well as all the other places that we've had before so it's um, all ready to run and uh, see how it uh, how it plays out with that new intercooler and Dan also got the rear seats mounted up to the new uh, rear seat mounts and as you can see he's got them sorted out here so they slide they actually slide back and forth he's got that one on his side there slid all the way forward 
and lean back and, and the one on my side here is just uh, slid all the way back and just sort of sitting up normally and we took a bit of time there to see how it feels sitting back in there and this is my perspective yeah, sort of eye level sitting in the back and you can see I've got good visibility I can see the top of the wing there nicely and uh, see well out the front seat and uh, w when the aircraft's flying it'll be a couple of degrees nose down so you'll have a pretty good view out the front as well Are we there yet? So uh, yeah we had it's pretty good actually sitting back in there I kind of enjoy it, it's like a limo and there's tons of room and I had three inches of headroom above me as well so anyway that took all cool and late in the afternoon we did the engine run so I'll let you sit back and watch that and then uh, like I normally do I'll, I'll, I'll go over the numbers at the end So I'm wondering if you notice how smooth that engine is. So that GoPro was just mounted on the little flexi mount and um, one it's running at high RPMs or even just mid-range, it's uh, super smooth. wasn't moving around at all. It's more vibration when it's at idle. Anyway, so here's the run and as expected, the uh, boost numbers are lower and temperatures are lower but all because of this uh, new intercooler. So looking at the boost there, 43.3. So that's basically a net boost of uh, 29.3 pounds. Last time we had 32 pounds of boost. And admittedly, I've put the um, prop there to a, a more coarse pitch setting. So it's putting more load on the on the engine. Uh, so we didn't get as high RPM this time, but um, subsequently because the air temperature is cooler going in there, we're not generating as much boost. And that's, um, well, partly because the EGTs are lower. So if you look at the EGT there, we're what, 1649 um, degrees last time. I think we were 1890 degrees. Um, for about the same amount of load 
and you know we had a higher RPM um, and higher boost. Uh, but anyway, if, if you look at uh, the temperatures there, what's interesting is uh, as the same as before, the orange turbocharger compressor outlet temperature, which is the temperature coming out of the second turbo, that doesn't register over 300 degrees because the sensor only goes to that level. But I'm kind of estimating it's around about 330 to 350. And then the air coming out of the first intercooler is down to 273, and that's about the same as it was before. But then if you look, the air coming out of the second, uh, second uh, intercooler, the, the new uh, water to air one, is 177 degrees. So uh, losing like 90, uh, what's that, 94, uh, 96 degrees, almost 100 degrees, that's coming down. Now, admittedly, we're running mains uh, pressure water through there and uh, it's going to drop a lot more but uh, in the aircraft it'll be running the fuel through there it won't soak up the heat as well as that but at least for takeoff and initial climb you'll be pulling a, you know quite a lot of heat out of uh, that intake air and that makes all the difference uh, to the power and as i said the egt's are lower which is always a good thing and you'll notice that in the video too you know the y pipe did uh, get sort of glowing but not like super red it was kind of more like a a darker red color and I think that's sort of acceptable at least on the test stand uh, you know when we're running in the aircraft and we have more cooling air running through the whole system uh, the intake air should be even cooler and immediately it was 100 degrees uh, ambient in the shop as you can see there 99.7 so it was a pretty hot day to be running this um, but overall I'm super happy with how that intercooler is working out and I think in the aircraft running the diesel fuel through there uh, for takeoff and climb is going to be um, the, the thing that's going to really make a difference. So if we go over to the spreadsheet and take a look, I'll see how things played out there. So on the spreadsheet there, done like I've done this before, put the RPMs in there for this for that particular data set, and then the ambient pressure and temperature, 99.7. Man, it was hot today. And um, then also put in uh, what the boost was, so 29.3 coming out of the second turbo and the temperature just estimated there 330 it doesn't really make a big difference on this spreadsheet what you put in there uh, but it does on the second one here so 29.3 again and 177 degrees coming out of there so that's that big 100 degree drop from that new water to air intercooler and now we're seeing 392 horsepower so last time we had 389 horsepower with a lot more boost and a lot more heat so this is good you know the power's up um, they're saying 18 point something um, gallons an hour and actually the ECU was saying 17 point uh, what did I have 17 point four which uh, shows there at 362 horsepower so we're somewhere in between 360 and 390 and really it doesn't matter uh, so much exactly what it is the point is that that new intercooler really uh, made a big difference and so uh, you know probably won't make such a big difference on the aircraft but it's definitely going to increase the performance for takeoff and climb so pretty happy about that and uh, good progress this week and um, tune in again next week on Tuesday for a usual episode and uh, see what we get up to and uh, once again thanks again for watching